Convener, uh, good morning, Mr Middleton. It's in that area I want to ask a few questions, if I may, as well. W up, up to the point where the approval was given, there was clearly concern about the contracts, um, and it did not lead to anyone asking for written authority or ministerial direction. So there has to have been some kind of assurance process in that space that enabled yourselves to recommend to the ministers to proceed with the contract. And what that seems to be missing for, for the members of the committee and perhaps for the public is what happened in there to take us from concerns to being feeling able to recommend proceeding with the contract. What, what happened? What did that assurance process look like to enable that advice to be given? To the Minister. I think the process was, as, as I've outlined, and I'm sorry if it's, if it's been unclear, that um, discussions between Transport Scotland officials and CMAL um, went over the ground. The, the CMAL themselves sought to negotiate um, uh, some of the financial risks back from the, from the extreme position perhaps taken by Ferguson's at the outset, so whether it's the 25% and other matters, I think they're outlined in the Auditor General's report. So some of the financial issues were, were, were negotiated with Ferguson's. And then CMAL made clear that they were still uncomfortable, but that they would want um, assurances from government that if we proceeded, they would not be left in a, an exposed position themselves. And therefore, um, to render them, they use the word harmless, I think, in their, in their written submission. And we therefore drew up a letter of comfort, as well as looking at our standard loan um, uh, letter. And those letter, that letter, those, those correspondence were drawn up in consultation with CMAL, in consultation with other parts of the Scottish Government, procurement, legal, financial. Um, and we believe that that provided us with sufficient basis to say to ministers, you are able to proceed. But in proceeding, you must, minister, be aware of the risks that have been identified. But those risks were primarily financial. No one, I think, raised the issue of the vessels not being completed or not being built. No one suggested the yard was somehow going to be incapable of building the ships. Now, I understand perfectly well the point the convener uh, put to me a few minutes ago, that it, does, it is not a satisfactory situation. But I don't know whether um, you, you have to put, you know, you're asking me to put myself back into the period of August, September, October 2015. And as far as we were concerned, the papers we put to ministers, I think on the 8th of October, covered the ground as far as we were able to do, both in terms of risks with Ferguson's and in terms of how we were um, giving comfort and reassurance uh, to see Mal that they would not be exposed. And that was all put up to ministers so that they could take a decision on whether they were content to proceed. Mm. So just to, to, to clarify, if all the key players at that point in the process were content, perhaps not happy, but content that the risks that we were being presented with were manageable. So everyone at that stage was content to, to make the recommendation to, to proceed. Well, everyone within government, I mean, I understand CMAL have, have made their views, and I'm not seeking to disparage any views that CMAL have expressed. I mean, the word content may not be a word that they would use, but I mean, I think they, they accepted the, the reassurances. They accepted the, 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 the letter of comfort which they were involved in drawing up, and they entered into the contract. Good. Thanks for that for now, convener. Thank you.